If we then divide the babies who were treated with clonidine uh, and morphine, you basically see that um, the clonidine babies, which are the black are very nicely uh, come off of therapy more quickly versus the babies who are on placebo. Um, and it was a mean uh, difference of four days. If you look at the amount of DTO or the morphine equivalent that the two babies, uh, groups of babies needed, you find that the babies who were on clonidine uh, needed 7.7 .7, um, total dose of morphine equivalents in contrast to the placebo, which it needed 19. Yes. Did, did all of them survive? Um, they survived to hospital discharge. However, there were three deaths in the clonidine group. We followed the babies for uh, up for a year to de determine, um, and two babies, one baby was died from homicide, from an overdose from mom giving the baby methadone. Oh my God. The other dose, the other uh, death was a uh, SIDS death, and the third death was a cardiomyocarditis uh, death. Uh, that happened, which we did not believe were related to the clonidine use. There is a higher incidence of sudden infant death in infants who are born to mothers who do methadone, or who are on methadone treatment programs or drug addiction. That was originally described, but in repeated studies, it does not seem to be the case, unless the mother also has HIV. Um, so I think that's interesting. HIV. So we further described the, uh, the, if we just look at the Johns Hopkins system, um, and you would see that, in fact, we separated the two uh, institutions, Johns Hopkins Bayview and Johns Hopkins Hospital, the downtown, um, and you find that placebo, the 50% of infants were on treatment at 23 days of their life, versus the babies who are clonidine, that 50% were still on treatment at 15 days. Um, um, this is also something that uh, we saw, which has been well described, babies who were on methadone exposure versus just those babies on heroin. The methadone babies often, uh, the, in the blue, are always um, have a longer protracted treatment program. Although, with that said, the babies, if moms do not go into the proper um, maintenance program during pregnancy, there's a whole bunch of other uh, um, risk to the baby, um, so it's strongly encouraged that mothers be on methadone or buprenorphine treatment programs. And you see here that the heroin babies uh, were actually came off quite nicely. We only had an N of eight of babies who were only exposed to heroin. Uh, this is also to reiterate the dose of DTO in the uh, placebo group versus that in the clonidine group. You can see that it markedly goes down and we were able to wean it uh, easily by protocol. Um, the effect of clonidine on blood pressure, it was statistically different, but not clinically meaningly di meaningfully uh, different, meaning that babies, uh, what we believe is what happened was the babies were more agitated, and although clonidine does decrease sympathetic out outflow, thus does decrease blood pressure, the baby um, actually became calmer, such that their blood pressures went down as well. Uh, and this is the, s the case of the heart rate as well, that we saw that after starting the drug, the the baby's heart rate went down, and actually, after stopping the drug, the baby's heart rate came up, but these were not statistically different. So if I can summarize, clonidine combined with DTO is effective in treating infants with neonatal abstinence syndrome. It's combined with DTA at a dose of one microgram per kilo every four hours is not associated with adverse cardiovascular outcomes in the newborn population. Infants with the worst signs of neonatal abstinence syndrome were going back and looking at some sub-analysis, in which I haven't shown you, but the, it benefited the most from added the addition of clonidine. Um, and more treatment failures were observed in the placebo group, meaning that there were babies who received placebo and DTO. Five um, of those babies went on to have uh, seizures uh, and other, I mean, five of those babies had what we call treatment failure, meaning they got up to a very high dose of DTO and still were unable to control their symptoms. And three of the babies on DTO and placebo had seizures. As I mentioned earlier, in response to your question, there were three deaths, as I've mentioned here. Am I out of time, or? Okay, tell me, how many How many more minutes? Okay, so, um, so the next uh, series of slides is basically going to be just a, um, sort of a reiteration about why alpha-2 adrenergic receptor uh, agonist uh, might actually be quite useful. 
um, they're um, in not only the withdrawal end, but also the treatment of babies um, at the beginning of treatment for pain and sedation. So just to let you know that um, critically ill infants require sedatives and analgesic therapy during their acute phase of their illness. So they too can develop uh, opiate dependency, which will need, the babies usually have to be weaned off of this medication before they go home. The standard of, say for example, fentanyl is, has become very common. It is a very potent opiate. It's very short um, duration of action. Um, and it's, uh, it has minimal acute cardiovascular side effects, so it's very light and we use it a lot. Unfortunately, it's very lipophilic and any drug that is very lipophilic crosses the blood-brain blood, blood barrier very easily uh, and binds very tightly. So um, fentanyl gets us where we want to be, but they also develop what we call tachyphylaxis or tolerance to it, so we have to increment that up. There are some studies that state that if a baby is on um, fentanyl for no great, for 24 hours, that in fact once you stop it, you can find symptoms of, um, of withdrawal, um, and that's not great. So uh, dependence also develops with morphine and hydromorphine, um, morphone, which is Dilaudid, which are the other two infusions that we basically use. So when babies are in the hospital, um, it has become standard of care um, and I'm not sure it's best practices, but this is what we do. Uh, certainly we have wonderful pain doctors at Hopkins who assist us, of which one you'll just hear after me. Um, and they're really good about transitioning babies over to, from acute um, or short-acting opiates to longer-acting opiates. But the transition usually goes to methadone. And for a person who came to the field on the other side of seeing methadone used in babies, who are born to mothers with opiate dependence and knowing about the long time that it takes for babies to get off of methadone. Um, certainly I only wonder and wondered if we might in fact be better off if we did something like oral morphine. However, oral morphine sometimes doesn't have the concentration that we need um, because it's, very, it's more dilute um, and so we have some barriers there. So adding clonidine to uh, this therapy is a current trial that we're currently doing uh, at Hopkins in which we're doing a randomized controlled trial looking at um, using clonidine as adjunct therapy for infants who have required uh, opiate dependency on the basis of the ICU uh, and determine whether in fact it's useful in this setting. The, the challenges are many uh, because of the simple reason that babies who are in ICUs often still have complex illnesses. Uh, some of which are related to pain and discomfort, and sorting out withdrawal from pain and discomfort is, is a challenge. Um, I want to not leave this talk without tell, telling you a little bit about buprenorphine, which is certainly becoming very commonly used in the uh, drug-dependent um, population, illicit drug-dependent population. And actually, in some studies, it's been used for chronic pain. Um, so, and it's a mixed agonist um, and antagonist, and so abuse potential is very low. Um, and also it has a ceiling effect with respect to respiratory depression. So actually killing oneself with it is, can happen, but it, you'd have to take a lot of it. The concern, however, is that most of the, the combination of buprenorphine with the benzodiazepam actually can cause more respiratory depression than you would have thought. And unfortunately, there's uh, papers in the literature in which there's been inadvertent deaths from benzos associated with people morphine in the illicit drug use. So, but with that said, people morphine for the treatment of neonatal abstinence syndrome from in utero exposure, um, the few studies that have been done have been very promising and that it does seem to reduce the time that a baby needs to detoxify from a, um, from a mom from opiates, particularly methadone. Mothers who are on buprenorphine during conception and through pregnancy, their babies can have uh, neonatal abstinence syndrome, but usually it's less severe and they usually get out of the hospital sooner. So buprenorphine is the opiate on the block. Get to know it, it will become more common. 